Number 13. A large cyclone directs a beam of helium plus 2 nuclei onto a target with a beam current of 0.25 milliamps. Letter A. How many helium nuclei per second is this? Okay. So, great. All right, so we got 0 0.250 milliamps. So we know we're already going to need that in amps, right? So just do the conversion. All you got to do is take this value and multiply it by 10 to the minus 3. And that's now the value in amps, okay? Now, we also have to remember that an amp, in other words, is the same thing as saying the number of coulombs passing through a particular point per single second, all right? So... What I'm going to do instead of using the term amps, I'm going to use the term coulomb per second. Now what I need to do here is I need to then take this given information and somehow convert this into what unit? Well, it tells me, the question is, how many helium nuclei per second is this? So in other words, the desired unit here is going to be the number of helium nuclei, which is basically, I'm not going to write the double positive, I'm just going to write a 2 plus up there, okay? Number of helium nuclei per second, okay? So, if you notice now, what do we need to really convert? Somehow we have to convert the Coulomb value into the number of helium nuclei, right? The seconds doesn't change because we know the rate of Coulomb per second and we got to find the rate of then helium nuclei per second. So it's really not a bad conversion that we have to do. And when I'm just focused on the numerator. So let's see. Let's write, let's start writing down the given. So 0 0.250 times 10 to the minus 3 coulombs per second. So the next question is, well, where can we go to cool, you know, what, what can I do from coulombs? Now we've seen this, and this is where the practice comes in handy. We've seen many times that we can go from knowing the amount of coulombs that are passing through a point to then knowing the number of electrons passing through a point, right? You might say, well, that's electrons, man. I, I need to know helium now. Well, think about it, though, right? We always did the problems for electrons because that's what they were talking about. But always keep in mind that no matter what, an, an elementary charged particle, whether it be a proton or a single electron, has the same exact magnitude of charge, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs. So the only difference is that the electron's negative and the proton's positive. And just keep this in mind, that a helium nuclei that has two positive charges essentially attached to it is the same thing in terms of charge as being two protons, right? Being two protons worth of charge. It has a net plus two, right, number of protons. So what I can do now is I can say that I can basically do this, right? So let's not focus too much on the getting to the helium yet. Let's just get into the number of protons or the number of electrons first, okay? So again, if you know then the total amount of coulombs and you know that every single proton or every single electron has this magnitude of charge, I can do a conversion because I know that there for every single proton, I'm going to choose the proton in this case, for every single proton, I'll put a little plus up there, it has a charge value of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs worth. Now notice, if I just stop my conversion here, the coulombs cancel, and this would tell me the number of protons, essentially, per second that are passing through. Okay? But, 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 what do we notice? We notice that the helium nuclei has essentially two protons per helium, right? So now I need to get essentially out of the unit of protons per second, and I have to now get into the unit of number of helium atoms per second. How do we do that? Well, we know this conversion. We just haven't stated it yet. Actually, we've stated it. We just haven't written it down, right? We know that the number of helium nuclei is the same thing as saying the charge of this helium nuclei is the same thing as saying two protons, right? Doesn't that kind of make sense? That the number of helium, excuse me, that the um, the total charge, I should say, not necessarily number, right? I should say this, that the, that the um, charge here is going to be equivalent to the charge that's inherent in two protons worth, right? In other words, when I do this now conversion here, 
I want to plug in then the protons on the bottom, right? Protons on the bottom. Protons on the bottom, okay? And I, I can I can replace this with number. It really doesn't make sense. That the number of helia, um, so it yeah, it really doesn't make a difference. So here, when I do my conversion, okay, the proton value will go in the denominator, and the helium nuclei will go on the top, okay? So now let's think, right? For every single helium atom, how many protons are there? Excess protons. There's two, right? And that's how the conversion works, and that's basically what we're saying up there, okay? So all we have to now do is then essentially divide that answer by two, right? And that should kind of make sense, because if we know the total number of protons and every helium atom essentially has two, we've got to divide it to find the total number of helium. So it's going to be 0.25 times 10 to the minus 3, divided by then 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th, divided then by 2, and we have a value here of about, and let me just, I'm just going to erase this for now. We have a value now of about 1.81, no, excuse me, 7.81. Oh boy, it's early, guys. 7.81 times 10 to the 14th, um... Helium, number of helium nuclei, right, per single second. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, if that's the way he is when it's early, I wonder what happens when it gets late. Hmm. Good question. So that's the answer, okay? Now, letter B. It says, now, how long does it take for one coulomb to strike the target? Okay. So now what do we need to do? So again, we need to, we can do basically a conversion if we like, all right? Um, we could also know the current that's flowing through, so watch. So basically what I can do is I know here, let's do this. Let's do, this was letter A, and let's do now letter B. <clears throat> so if all I knew was the total amount of charge, Okay, so one coulomb's worth, so Q is equal to one coulomb, and I knew the current, right? So the current here is I. Uh, that's going to be 0.25 uh, milliamps. Could you find, and remember, we already did the conversion, so I'm actually just going to write what we wrote above. 0.25 times 10 to the minus 3 amps. Can we find out how long this takes? Yeah, sure, right? So time is equal to question. So what's the formula that relates? So the current is equal to the change in the number of coulombs passing through divided by the change in time. To solve for the time, just do a little cross multiplication. Right, essentially, oh, I don't want to bring that equal sign. Just simply switch the variables there, right? So the change in time, or the amount of time that passes is going to be equal to the charge that passes. So 1.00 divided then by the current. So which is 0 0.25 times 10 to the minus 3. Right, and looks like three sig figs again. So it's just one divided by 0.25 times 10 to the minus three. So about 4,000. So 4.00 times 10 to the third seconds. Okay. So that's now how long it would take for that amount of charge uh, to strike the target. Okay. Now, oh great, let us see. Don't you love the three for one deals? All right, so how long before one mole of helium nuclei strike the target? Okay. <sighs> so, uh, let's, let me see. All right, so let, let's take some of these, an I have to, I have no room. So I'm going to have to take some of these answers. Maybe let me just bring them up there. All right, and I might have to erase some of this stuff. So, any case, how are you guys doing? I hope you're doing well. Hope you're having a good semester. I hope, generally speaking, everything is going well. I know sometimes school can be a little stressful. Well, you might be saying a little. A lot, a lot, a lot stressful, right? Um, but, you know, as the old saying goes, this too shall pass. So, um, okay, enough of the uh, philosophical life advice. Let us see. So how long before uh, one mole of helium nuclei strike the target? Well, why don't we first find out the amount of charge um, that 
one mole of helium nuclei uh, contains. Okay, so we know that one mole of helium nuclei would be a the number, right? Avogadro's number essentially of helium nuclei. So every single then mole of helium nuclei would be there would be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd number, right? That's the number now of helium nuclei. So the moles would cancel here, leaving me then with the number of helium nuclei. So it's this number, right? So it's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Now remember that if we know the, now remember each helium nuclei contains two units of charge, not one. So what's important here is to know the number of charges, essentially. We have to know the number of elementary charges, right? So that being the case, if I know that, if I know that for every single helium nuclei, there contains two elementary charges. In other words, there's two protons. This would then allow me to find the total number. This allows me to find the total number of elementary charges, right? Which would be equivalent to the total number of protons. Okay. So now this unit cancels, right? This would leave me with that the total amount, I don't want to say total amount of charge because it's not in Coulombs yet, but this would tell me the no total number of protons essentially. But now you might be thinking, well, if I know the total elementary, the total number of elementary charges, in other words, I know the total number of protons, could I find the total number of charge or the amount of charge now? Sure you can, because you know that for every single proton, it has a magnitude of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 units of charge, right? Or coulombs of charge. So now notice, here's how we get into now the charge value for one mole of helium nuclei. We just have to do this math on out. Right, and that should make sense. It's just equal to one mole of helium is equal to this number. And if each helium was one, had one positive, then it would just take the number of, it'd be like a proton, take the number and then multiply it by the amount of charge. But each helium has two elementary charges, so that's why we have to double it, right? That should hopefully make sense. So now, let's figure this out. Let's just plug it on in. So we got 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, multiplied by 2, multiplied by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th. And here we go, we get a value of about now 1.9, I guess 3 all round, times 10 to the 3, 4, 5. Okay, 5. Now, okay, and that is going to be in terms of Coulombs. Now, you could have continued this conversion on out. I mean, there's many ways to do this, right? You could have done this all as a dimensional analysis. But what I like to do now is I like to realize, hey, I found Q, right? We know the current is still going to be the same as it was before. I is going to be 0 0.25 times 10 to the minus 3 amps, all right? And then we got to find time. So now we can just do our calculation. So current is equal to the change in charge over the change in time. I want to find time. Just simply do a little switcherooski. And after that little switcherooski, we do a little plug in a rooski. I, I, I don't know. Don't ask me what that was, but that was a plug in a rooski. 1.93 times 10 to the fifth divided them by the current, 0.25 times 10 to the minus three. I'm losing my mind along with you guys. I'm in it with you. So take that value. I'm gonna use the exact value though when I do the calculation. And 0.25 uh, times 10 to the minus 3. So here we go. We're going to get 7.7, .7, I guess, 1 times 10 to the... Oh, boy. It didn't convert it into scientific, so give me two seconds. 3, 6, 7, 8. Okay. So about 10 to the 8. And that'll be in terms of seconds. If you got to find the hours or the minutes or the days or the years or the you know, millennia, you can obviously do that conversion. Guys, thank you so very much for tuning in. I appreciate it. Please remember to help us out and subscribe, hit that like button, and maybe even tell some of your colleagues and classmates. All right, we appreciate your support very, very much. It really does mean a lot. Thank you.